Oh, what do we have here celebrating so actively? Why, it's common sense! My dear viewer, could it be that long-awaited moment has finally arrived? You've probably forgotten what it feels like when exactly what you wanted happens. Not some abstract discussions about a dubious future that is unclear when it will come or if it even will be worthwhile. Admit it, you all see on the internet are just talks, talks and talks, yada yada yada, but you know, sometimes even the most stagnant stick can shoot. Sometimes studios, after 8 years of active agendas, start to realize that money isn't infinite and we, the viewers, suddenly annoy them and we don't believe a single word they say. We hate them with all our hearts for what they do to our beloved franchises. Like Dementors, they suck the soul out of them, depriving us of what genuine pleasure we once had. But now, everything is different. Now we are sucking the money out of them without giving it to them, regardless of what they show us and not buying what they sell us. Just like Ubisoft destroyed itself, various movie studios continue to ruin themselves as well. Something has changed now, and it's not just a coincidence, it's a pattern. Well, from the title and the preview, you already understand. Velma hasn't just died as it did a couple of months ago, this anthill of hatred towards viewers has finally burst into blue flames. And there will be no more damn Velma. Using the unfortunate example of Velma, everything I said above correlates perfectly. It's all interconnected. Using the same Velma, a series that was collectively deemed the worst of the worst in the history of cartoons by us, internet dwellers. And through this disgusting piece of... Well, I can't even call it cinema. We witnessed how justice triumphs. And how we decide. We, the viewers. The crash of Velma even reveals to the average viewer how these Hollywood antics work. Because of this, bloggers have a reason to talk about it. Yes, that same Velma which is a creepy self-insert of the author, with a complete deformation of the character into an incomprehensible something, with Scooby-Doo completely cut off the show about Scooby-Doo, with Shaggy turning into who knows what, with Daphne selling substances to minors, and I won't even start on Fred, and how Velma worked on her mother's corpse. Oh dear god, this series finally got what it deserved. It's not being renewed and finally it's being triumphantly cancelled and appropriately this project is being condemned. Recently the final Halloween special was released which will be its last breath and we dear friends should rejoice at this for it's the first sign that everything is heading toward the better. We're witnessing how studios are gradually starting to heal from this, well, let's call it an acute social political disease. Some call it an agenda, others differently and you know what I mean. Dear God, at first I didn't even intend to watch this. I just wanted to scream along with you and mock this Velma. Because what else is there to do with it? I mean, it doesn't even deserve to exist. After all, Velma is just a project so worthless that no one should watch it. Like intros of South Park. And screaming that Velma died somewhere in the second season is actually encouraged as a symbol of rationalism. Oh my God, what did, what did I just say? This abomination is finally getting cancelled. On our channel, we've already made several videos about this circus, and uh, to be honest, I'm happy that this nightmare is finally ending. I really hope we forget it. Although, no, we shouldn't forget it as a lesson for all future generations about what not to produce. Ugh, fine. Why do they even watch this? And I keep asking myself this question. After all, no one in their right mind would voluntarily watch this. But. Let's talk about something good, because the special is actually magnificent. The perfect finale. And do you know why? Because in the end, Velma goes to hell! Oh my god, did you see the audience reaction? They are all so thrilled that this vile thing is finally ending. It's just a regular Halloween special where Velma's ghost investigates weird stuff after the second season. There are paranormal cults doing all sorts of nonsense, continuing to disgrace the legacy of the Scooby-Doo franchise. Yes, still without Scooby, in a cartoon set in a Scooby-Doo universe. There is no Scooby. Oh my god. I've been repeating this for for two years, I guess. It's unbearable. The, the most important thing, in the end, she ends up in hell. And she resurrects. Oh my god, how much longer? I hate this sensational orange abyss. <laughs> Excuse me. I... I don't know how to review this series. I, I mean, I hate it. I really hate it. It shouldn't exist. Why did they make it? For, for who? What? Why? So, what was I saying? 
Alright, Velma, like this entire animated series has gone to hell, because all evil belongs there. A traditional band from higher powers. And then the fuss started. Some guy pooped out of, out of nowhere and said he enjoyed working on Velma, and then he was sorry that the third season wouldn't be coming out. That's it! The crowd is ecstatic, they finally got information from someone involved, and he says it won't be happening anymore. Everyone is happy. Finally, the nightmare is over. And then, that jerk popped up again and said, Oh, sorry, I don't know anything. Oh my god, maybe Velma will still come out. Who knows? Thanks for the likes anyway. That last comment killed me. I mean, oh my god, who does that? Ban you, internet plebeian. I was already upset and I was about to not make a video. You can see the emotional state I'm in. But then... HBO Max finally confirmed that the Velma series is indeed cancelled, and it won't be coming back! Oh my god, I, I don't even know what to say. I wasn't even supposed to make this review. No one should have watched this. God, this whole existence of Velma is solely because people are actually watching it. Because, damn it, they just cannot believe something like this could exist or be this bad. They go and watch it, seriously subscribing to HBO Max, paying actual money to witness this horror. In Lovecraft's books, it's written, don't look, don't watch, it'll eat your brain. But no, they go, they watch it, and then they make reviews to tell everyone how bad it is. And there's so much of this feedback, this misunderstanding and hey that it's enough for this show to continue. It leaves feeding on your hatred. So, um, well, my video actually helps this pawn of Satan to exist. Uh, this demon cannot be defeated. It thrives because we hate it. So we need to love it. So they'll make it again. Ah, it hurts my brain. Actually, the rant above doesn't quite reflect the real situation, which I'll explain a little later. Just wait until I finish losing my mind. But I had to make sure that this special was really the end. That it won't be renewed and it will rot somewhere in the gutter. And that's how it seemed, because in the end, the creature finally ended up in hell, where demons uh, would torment it. I only hope it didn't go to hell from the Hasbin Hotel, where they would just sing instead of suffering. But the world is cruel, and this scum returned, leaving an empty spot for a third season. And as I said earlier, though for some reason, I'm still confident that this is truly the end of this shameful mess. And here is why. Velma is another project in style of let's destroy your childhood or just your belief in anything good. I won't retell previous videos, so there is no point, you can watch them by yourselves, but the point is that it's awful in every freaking way. The series hates itself, it hates you, it even hates Scooby-Doo. And may I remind you, who isn't even there? And it even manages to scam the creators out of their pay. I mean, it literally hurts everyone. The ratings aren't going up, no one is getting properly paid, the viewers don't like it. I mean, why does it exist? How? Why? And Velma herself is just the author's attempt to insert herself into the character in the show. I mean, don't get me wrong, I get it when someone wants to make themselves a character. Like, create a cartoon character that looks like them and everything revolves around them because, you know, you're the creator, this is your world, you're the author, you love yourself and all that stuff. It's one thing when you create a cartoon around the character that resembles you, but it's another thing when you insert yourself into a well-known character that has existed since the 60s. What? Oh my god. This abomination came out and everyone was horrified thinking there is no way it will get a second season, but it damn well did! And it even became the most popular show on the HBO Max streaming service. But you ask how? Everyone hates it. Well, it's hard not to be popular on a service when David Zaslav from Discovery, with his brilliant decisions, removed everything else on the streaming service. It's like I deleted all my videos on YouTube, left one and said this video became the most popular on my channel. Ugh, this is exactly what happened. And this Velma got a second season, but in reality, it didn't get it because of its so-called popularity from hate. It's actually a bit simpler, but at the same time more complicated. Here's a little secret about how Hollywood works. Sometimes they make more than one season and wait for your response before releasing the second one. Because making cartoons and series take a long time. They might order two seasons at once, then release the first, let the audience hype it up, 
And in the record time, bam, here's the second one. Netflix did it, Amazon did it, and other studios do it too. The studio initially ordered a bunch of episodes, then they simply called one batch season one and the other season two, even though the second season was never actually made separately. They were always part of the same project. No one in their right mind would create a show that everyone hates, otherwise we would already have seen Morbius 2 by now. And you know, that movie still earned a more billion dollars, while Valma got a Valmillion views. <laughs> See what I did there? Funny. But the real trick with Velma is that the creators and animators were only paid for one season, which they originally animated. They didn't get paid for the second one because it's technically still the first season split in two. So the animators did the work, got paid, received royalties and all of that. But for the second season they didn't, because the studio unexpectedly split the first one into two halves. Velma somehow managed to scam even its own animators. This show is unique in how terrible it is. I don't know if there is a single redeeming quality in it, except for the animation itself, I mean. The animators, uh, the one who draw the movement, the staging and the visuals, did their job well. It's not their fault they had to animate this stupid offspring of modern culture. The pinnacle of shame, hating everyone and itself. Yes, that's how I imagine Velma. Some incoherent mess of words about how much everyone hates it. And basically, the only thing that was actually made after the second season was this Halloween special, where they tried to revive Velma's spirit. Did you notice how HBO Max proudly announced how the show was breaking records, how popular it was? But not a word about how we actually felt about this popular Hollywood product. And for fun, I decided to check out other reviews of Velma and ha <laughs> oh my god, no one even talks about the plot. And they shouldn't, because no one remembers it. People stopped watching somewhere near the end of the season 1. The only thing everyone can recall is that at the end of the second season, Scrappy, in a Springtrap style, took down Velma. And then the jerk resurrected as a ghost. Or something like that. And you know what? Those who review Velma are actually lucky, because they don't even finish watching it and avoid a bunch of a truly awful moments. And for example, this thing. It's that witch girl from an old Scooby-Doo movies. Yes, it's the Hex Girls. The very same girls who were like a virtual music group in the style of Gorillaz, but only appeared in Scooby-Doo shows and movies. And now look at what they've turned into. I don't know. And forget the plot, you're not here for that. You're here to witness the suffering and pain of all your beloved characters. Even modern Minecraft mod reviews have more interesting storylines than Velma. And don't lie, I know you agree with me. The fact that Velma is getting cancelled only promises good things for us in general. I mean, just look at the recent news in the gaming industry and animation. Even Ubisoft is burning with the blue flames due to all their political agendas and other shenanigans. Gamers are dreaming that they'll be sold to Tencent so we can finally get a decent game out of them. Personally, I want Ubisoft to lose the rights to Heroes of Might and Magic and give it to someone who can make it properly. Please! And as for animated shows, it's even funnier. Hmm, speaking of Inside Out 2, its success is going to lead to such a flood of sequels that you'll be amazed. Just imagine for a second. We're getting a new season of The Amazing World of Gumball, more Adventure Time, another regular show, a return of Steven Universe, tons of sequels from Disney, Phoenix and Ferb is coming back. Wow! I mean, they are considering making a third season of Gravity Falls, so we've made a tons of videos about this. Even Gandhi Tartakovsky is starting to remember he has Symbionic Titan unfinished. A new season of Primal is coming next year. And someone even said there are rumors about a continuation of Megas XLR. Some of these titles might not mean much to you, but as a cartoon fan, I just listed a whole bunch of a juicy delicious cake. If even one of these comes out, believe me, I'll talk about it for three and a half hours straight. Okay, maybe, maybe less. I hope less, or I'll go insane. We're going to get such a crowd of sequels and follow-ups. Give thanks to Inside Out 2 for being a sequel made without any gimmicks. And it raked in the cash. And do you know why it made so much money? Disney personally went to them and said, put in less queerness. Yeah, they literally went and bluntly said that. And voila, the best animated film ever. I mean, in terms of views, showings and uh, box office. Yeah, I'm writing the rest of this without the script. 
just on emotions. And like I told you, three years ago, studios just copy each other to copy each other's profits. They want money. But because of this, they often copy their own mistakes and step on the same rakes for eight years. But if they now copy how Disney and Pixar made Inside Out, then uh, literally the entire list of animated shows and sequels I just mentioned will be released and it will be just perfect. And even more, there's Moana 2 coming up, and new Zootopia and who knows what else is being prepared. Imagine if all of that comes out and it's done right, just right, with no gimmicks. Inside Out 2, it's not brilliant, it's just good. Notice. It's just a good cartoon, and that was enough to become the best animated movie in the history of animated movies. Literally, it's number one. That was their genius plan. For eight years of publishing agendas, uh, they lowered our expectations so much that they didn't need to make masterpieces. Because now, any decent work is a masterpiece. Well, it's probably a good strategy, I guess. So, one way or another, my dear friends, we're theoretically looking at the right and bright future. And yeah, I'm spinning the same talk again, but facts are facts. One piece of agenda filled garbage like Velma is dead. Apparently, others are starting to die too. We'll see what happens next. And believe me, I'll be the first one to tell you about it. Or at least I'll try. Making videos fast is hard, you know. Well, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't get lost in endless expanse of YouTube. And I'll see you all in the next one.